With same ability grouping, you are likely more interested in differentiating the classroom and assigning appropriate activities to each group. If we conclude each group is at a different level of understanding, then we can scaffold to help them reach their unique zone of proximal development. Students that struggled in pre-assessment are likely to need review on foundational skills. There is no sense pushing them forward only to continue to struggle. Be prepared to provide activities that review topics and skills from the previous grade levels. On the flip side, we want to continue to engage and stimulate high performing students. Too often these students are asked to slow down or are otherwise held back so other students can catch up. Focus on giving them difficult critical thinking problems or application, synthesis, or manipulation activities. Moving into the next analysis piece, you can look through a breakdown of which questions students struggled on, as well as a breakdown of how the class answered each question. Many teachers use this information through a review assessment at the end of a class period or from a homework quiz. There are a few scenarios to look out for. Either the entire class struggled and there is an even distribution of misconceptions, the class struggled but it's clear what they were confused about, or the class did well and you'd like to explore why some students still struggled on that question. This provides valuable information on each question and the misconceptions that may exist. Often teachers are surprised at the results and this presents a golden opportunity to explore these misconceptions. A valuable exercise may be to actively ask for feedback from students or ask them to reflect in a think pair share. Furthermore, if the quiz is created by the teacher, then there might be more opportunity for insight than if the quiz was created by someone else. When a student takes a quiz multiple times, we track each attempt and provide teachers a snapshot of that improvement. There's a lot we can do with this information depending on the nature of the activity, but we will devote more time to this in another module. For now, we recommend leaving quizzes open for multiple attempts so you can see which students are trying multiple times and seeking to improve. If you need to see a results report for more summative data collection, you can go here. This will give you a simple score report for the entire class with an opportunity to click on each student to explore their individual attempts. There are two important opportunities here. One, you can isolate the first, last, and best attempts so you can transfer a score into your gradebook. This means you don't have to worry about restricting student attempts since you will always have access to the data from the first attempts if that's what you wish to grade. Two, you can see a detailed report of each student's performance. When used as a pre-assessment before a student-centered activity, teachers can assign that activity and then spend time with individual students and discuss these results one-on-one. -on -one. This is a great screen to look at with each individual student. Lastly, if your quizzes are tagged to multiple curriculum skills, you will get additional data within each quiz. So when you drill into this report, you can see on which skills the class underperformed from the assessment. This is best used as a cumulative pre-assessment or review activity to help craft a targeted review plan based on this benchmark. This tool, in conjunction with the mastery dashboards, assist in real-time mastery-based interventions.